Hello, Michael Bull here with the Commercial Real Estate Show. We're at Recon 15 in Las Vegas, the retail event of the year. And we met up with Gar Muse here with Cooper Carey, renowned architect. And we'll find out what's going on in the architectural world related to retail real estate and development. So first of all, you can let us know what are some of the projects that you've been working on recently, first in the U.S.? Um, well, we've been working with Miller Capital down in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, on Mount Pleasant Town Center. Uh, it's a project that was originally developed probably 15 years ago and Belks had a need to expand their store so we have built a parking deck for them, uh, grade level plus three, uh, three levels. Um, and then they also needed to move their men's store so we converted a vacant building, expanded it for their men's store. So they actually have a men's store separate from their main store and currently we're also um, expanding and renovating another vacant building uh, for an our house. Um, so it's, it's, it's a repositioning of, of, of the property. There's Tell our listeners about an our house. What's an our house? An our house is a uh, home furnishing store. And uh, we've also created a pad for a new hotel, which they're in discussions with a hotel developer right now. So we've already gotten approval through the township. Um, in addition to Mount Pleasant, we've been uh, renovating the interiors of Phipps Plaza in Atlanta. Uh, Simon Properties are, is our client. Uh, Whiting Turner is our contractor. It was actually a design-build project uh, that was a competition between uh, two other design-build teams. And Simon really wanted to um, more upgrade and modernize the property. Uh, Cooper Carey is also adding a hotel at the corner of um, Peachtree and uh, Wayuka, right outside the Nordstrom store, which is uh, currently under construction. Right. And if you're not familiar with Atlanta, um, this is one of the preeminent, nicest, highest end malls in the, in the Atlanta area, or maybe in the southeast, isn't it? It is. It's. Um, I was originally uh, the uh, uh, director of the project when I was with uh, TBS Design back in the late 80s. Uh, at that time, Equitable was our client. And it was being challenged by Lenox Mall, yet separate property owners. And Equitable wanted to um, really upgrade the center because it had some very high end tenants, but they were afraid of losing them. So that design was done as uh, more of a hospitality looking type project, added a lot of wood uh, interiors, uh, leather seating, but back in, you know, 87 wasn't very popular. Um, and uh, several restaurants that opened up to the exterior. So the renovation now, what uh, price range, what's the budget for this project? I mean, I've been over there. It looks like it's pretty extensive. Uh, we started out right around seven, seven and a half million. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we added another million because uh, Simon decided to uh, get rid of more of the wood columns, uh, which we're actually taking out some columns and not replacing them. We are also uh, taking some wood off and adding stone and stainless steel to it. Mm -hmm. What are the uh, tenants and, and landlords like Simon, you know, what are they trying to do to, to upgrade these malls and, and get more consumers into the malls? Well, I think um, as you uh, go around the country, especially in the more urban settings, you're starting to see um, other uses come in, whether it's office, residential, or hospitality. Uh, and it's a densification of, of the land. It's, you're, it's, it's, you don't have as many greenfield developments anymore. Uh, there's a few, but very few, and you have existing properties um, that they want to maintain and, um, and transition in, uh, as the markets change. Um, so we're starting to see more um, uh, non-retail uses going into these properties to keep them stronger and um, meet the changing times. What are some of the other new design aspects that you're seeing in retail properties and mixed-use properties today uh, that may not be the uh, retail we saw uh, when we were younger? I don't know that there's anything uh, earth-shattering. Um, uh, all the, uh, the owners and developers are starting to focus on the millenniums and what their needs are. And it seems like 
they are um, so, so no one so no one needs to talk to each other they can just do it by text right uh, <laughs> well actually they do like to interact yeah. with each other but it's right. more in a social scene yeah. uh, restaurants restaurants are becoming uh, more popular in especially the malls mm -hmm. where you have a higher percentage of restaurants our food offerings um, the the Millennials seem to want to live in the urban areas they want to not depend on the cars as much mm -hmm. and, and but they also want to get out and gather and, and uh, socialize with people and it seems like uh, the opportunity to eat and dine is, is, a, is a, a good means for that. How about uh, LEED and other types of sustainability? Is, the, is that strongly used now? It seems like in the downturn people were shying away from some of the cost there, but is this a LEED project that you're doing here at uh, um, Phipps? Um, it's not a lead project, but we are um, uh, replacing all the lighting fixtures with LEDs. Uh, they, I, I think the retail developers are, are conscious of conserving energy and they're doing um, what they can to do so, but um, they're not, I haven't seen them wanting to pay the expense of getting lead certification. And it's getting a little more involved to do so. We're doing Starbucks stores and all of those are LEED certified. And they kind of go through like a, a grouping of 10 to get the approvals. And um, so everything that we do um, for Starbucks is focused on being at least LEED certified. Yeah, well that's great. I think it's, it's a must. Uh, and we sell investment properties and it's a, it's a great check in the box for a lot of investors uh, to see that. What about some of the other challenges that you see? Uh, you know, we hear that construction costs are, are higher uh, in some cases than, than, than these projects can, can make them feasible. Uh, what are some of the other challenges you see in the development world today? I think it's, you know, coming out of the recession, there's been a depleting of talented workforce, both in uh, design, architectural design firms, as well as construction. And everybody's being challenged with getting quality people because you've got this gap of the five to ten year experienced person who's who's left the business and they've gone into something else. Um, I think with all of our projects we're looking for um, that identity, that branding, that that something that that's makes the project stand out and be unique so that there's a story to be told with with each one from a, a at least a marketing standpoint. Yeah. Well, Garth, thanks for joining us here at ICSC. You're welcome Michael. Michael Bull at ICSC Recon 15. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Advisors, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive and powerful suite of commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R E A L N E X. Excelligent, the resource professionals use for commercial real estate information. Visit Excelligent.com. That's X-C-E-L-I-G-E-N-T. Commercial Search, the source to market and source available properties for sale or lease. Visit CommercialSearch.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional videos, podcasts, or articles, visit CREshow.com.